This is Paul Bibby, who uh, kindly loaned his name and part of the input of the design of the Bibby knife to the new knife I designed. This is the one I built for myself. It's got a slightly... Uh, slightly shorter. Slightly shorter blade. Slightly bigger palm swell. Yeah. Nice flare on that though. Yeah. You ever seen bacon cook there, Sandy? Yeah, I've done it myself. We've so I've got a Mora Classic here, which yeah. I uh, which I love. This is a Mora Nif one, laminated one, yeah. and then I make uh, birch bark sheaths for them because I think they're prettier, and you can wear them around your neck, things like that. But I, I, I know I end up giving these away. Very bushcraft, aren't they? Very shrad, posh craft, Poshcraft. very posh crafty. Um, you can make the little leather blade guards, uh, sorry, birch bark blade guards like that, which are uh, which are great, and they don't they don't come off. No. But um, these ones, that's another Mora, they don't come out and you can, I can make a belt loop for them um, just by making one longer or we can actually make a separate belt loop. Yeah, yeah, and also at the end of the day. And in these, if you look, it's uh, this one's bark and bark. So it's, a, so it's a bark micro sheath like that one. Yeah, yeah. And then with a, uh, with a, with a woven birch bark uh, sheath. Now I buy my birch bark in from abroad. Yeah. Uh, and that's come from where did you say? Uh, this has come from India, the Himalayas. Yeah. yeah. So it's but it is it is so it is still do is I'm going to make a tiny little indentation just so this knife fits in, and this piece here I've cut off, which is just going to flatten out. I'll just uh, make this a little bit, and then we're just going to stick that on there so they just marry up. We don't even bother. We don't even have to tie them together. So that gives you a friction fit. Then, this right? did no. This is this is this is just to stop the blade cutting through the bark. Okay. Yeah. So that just stops just a piece of wood. The friction fit actually comes on this part of the handle. Okay. With the bark. Yeah. So that work. They work lovely, and they're they're really good neck knives because yeah. they're because they're super light and yeah. they look a bit nicer than the plastic. And uh, what knife are you going to make the sheath with then? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I I have a jack though, so why not use a jack though? Um, I people we did disappointed. Um, it's grubby, still razor sharp. Sandy will testify to that. But it's a tool. So what's the point in having these? People collect them. I don't. This is a this is a, a, a tool for me. So I'm just going to thin this down slightly, just so I've got a decent flat surface ish. But this is just a piece of lime. We are really blessed with lime here, so you can carve this amazingly well and then if we take um, I use these graphitones solid graphite so and they're great for on green wood yeah, yeah. so if we just make a quick whoop and it won't blunt in your blade as well because it's just being graphite a quick if we just marry that up there there we go now if I carve that bit out just the same depth as this blade, so what's that? Three mil, two and a half mil. Two and a half mil, I see. There you go. And then we've got uh, we've got a, a makeshift knife piece. When we stick this on, you can bind this with a bit of. We've got we've got we've got raffia here. We've got uh, we can make use natural cordage, yeah, yeah. but where it's going in the bark, it won't need it. And this literally is just to stop the blade cutting, fill it in, cutting through the bark. So yeah, yeah. I like these graphitones because you can draw on it green wood. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're just going to carve a tiny little stop cut into there. Oh, that bacon smells good. Mark's cooking bacon on the fire, it smells good. I just got a waft of it then. So there you go. So now what we can do is um, safety third. Yeah, we, third can, yeah. we can cut into that mark there like that. Now you can't do this with a blunt knife, you can only do this with a sharp knife. 
because you're cutting through a lot of fibre. That's right, yeah. So there you go. And the yeah. good thing about the tip is it's very strong. You can you can get in and dig. Yeah, we don't yeah. need to dig with yeah. this. It's not particularly not particularly. Uh... Now I hold my knife here like this. Um, I may be I may be breaking a hundred million rules, but uh, I find I can get a little bit more tip control. And if you can see, I'm always just to go in a little bit tighter. You've been doing it for years. You haven't cut yourself badly. I've you? I've cut myself. It, and it's always been through tiredness or or haste where I've cut myself. It's not a it's not a difficult job to uh, to do with it with a sharp knife. Now you can see we're push cutting through quite a lot of, quite a lot of timber there. Yeah. yeah. So we'll. Uh, it's definitely a technique for getting comfortable. With it's getting it's getting without because these knives are razor sharp. You don't want to to slip out like that and end up taking the tip of your finger off. No. Because you won't be able to pick your nose. Yeah. There you go. We're in there. See now. So I reckon we're nearly there. So there you go. We just need to take a little bit out of here, just there, and then this piece. We'll obviously make this a lot smaller. We'll be tied on. We'll flare this end out massively. I've kept it deliberately rounded so it'll give a tiny bit of tiny bit of grip yeah yeah just on there but it's lime so it'll wear out but uh we'll just finish off by taking a little bit more out of there the knife fits in there lovely as you can see nice and flush there you go this is just going to go on the top we're going to bind this on slightly as you can see i flared the head but now i just need to take a lot of this material off this side so i'm going to put it on there have a look for the grain there you go and we just twist and then that takes all that work out of there just neaten this up a little bit it's a bit rounder a bit nicer so this is the uh the blade guard so we can thin this right down now so this is these two pieces are going to be the blade guard so we're going to nip these up and then we're going to come across with a saw just saw them just shy and then round this off nicely and then we're going to start on the bark work so we need to thin this right down now as you can see beautiful and then we shan't waste the time we shall just go through there yeah let's marry that up there so here you go. we've got the piece of wood here which fits the knife and we flared the ends now this isn't that you won't you won't see this so what we're going to do now is we're going to just with a piece of raffia just a bit of old raffia keep it natural so that's just um just raffia grass just grass is it just grass so but it'll it'll just hold this in just enough just so we can just keep the sheath together because the actual weaving of the birch bark is going to hold all this together this is just a little bit of added security just do a quick reef there you go. We'll nip all this off. And we'll stick a little bit at the bottom. So there's the knife. You can see we've got a nice little friction fit on there. We've got a nice little flare. So that fits in. Yeah. In and out. So that is basically a rudimentary sheaf as it is. But we're going to cover it in birch bark and make it nice and plaited. So I'll uh, just trim this bark up to size to get the to get the length, and we'll uh, we'll get back on that. There you go. So we've just gone across there, and you can see that's how wide we want to go. And birch bark following the grain. It cuts like leather. Yeah, I can see that. Pop. So let's pick a nice piece. I think that's prettier than uh, than the other side. So that there, we need to make two of those. So what are you doing now, Mark? You're cutting out. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just cutting some. These are going to be the strips. Are going to go round and round and round and round and round that way. But I like them a bit thinner than the sheath. So this is the this is the sheath as it is now 
So that's that component so, of so the you've toothpaste. Got, you've got two layers going on. Two layers, layer. and the two layers will become apparent very Actually, shortly. So through. we can go in and out. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah there, in Finland, they have a real beautiful technique of cutting these birch bark very, very thin yeah. and then weaving in and out. Now, you can only weave in and out, in and out on an odd number. So you'll either need three, five, seven, nine to do the weaving in and out. Otherwise, you'll end up with it'll just go round and round and round and round. It needs to be an odd number so you can get the okay. the true in and out weave all the way up. Yeah. And that goes with weaving anything. Willow, bark, leather, everything needs to be an odd number to go through. Right. So back of the knife. Back of the knife. Oh, this is where, where the 90 degree spine comes into play. People think 90 degree spine is just for ferro rods. You know, you like probably one fire a day, whereas this will do all your tasks. And it's great for scraping the bark up for getting all the uh, the rough outer bark off. So we get a lovely finished uh, finished product. And this stuff, obviously, if we were going to light a fire now, <laughs> that's your that's your stuff. So and Mark often comes round and hoovers up after me, and then lights a little fire because he's a bit of a firecracker. We've got the wooden sheath in there. We've just done that we've put the two straps on there. I've just tied it up with a bit with a bit of old cord. Um, it's not 550 cord, it's just a bit of nylon cord just to hold that in place while we start plaiting. And then we'll start plaiting now. So as you say, you're using three pieces, aren't you? We're... So that's two pieces around there. All right, yeah, yeah. And then what we're gonna do, we've got these longer pieces here, which are gonna be the round plait. So what I tend to do is I tend to start by tucking it in there like that. And then we go round the oh, back plait. That, that, that kind of holds it in, doesn't it? So yeah, so we go over under if we can keep if we can remember over under yeah. over under repeat repeat we can make a sheath in so, it so is important we said earlier the three pieces you've got our three pieces to plait you meant one two three yes sorry yeah. the, so one you've got to have an odd number yeah, so it yeah. can either be one three five right, and okay. one is an odd number so we're going to go under there because we've gone over then we'll go over because we've gone under Oh, I see what's happening. And we'll go under. So you end up with the sheath over, under, over, under. Yeah, yeah. And it is that simple. Now that piece there, I don't trim off, I just took under. But I also follow it round, pull it tight through there. push it through there and it begins to lock. Now we don't give up there. What we do is we have the second piece just on the back of that. And just follow it around. Follow it around because you don't need to stitch these two together because the, the compression of everything, everything pulling on everything else yeah, will, hold, will hold that tight. So. Oh, yeah, so there you go. So you can see we've joined up there and we'll go over again. Then we'll go under. So we're just going to cut through this bit of bark here because we're just getting towards the end now. So we're just about to finish. So we're going to go over and then we're going to flop this all the way over to create a second, a second one there that we can stitch through. Because this is the top, we're going to stitch through twice. That's just to add a bit more friction to the handle. That's just going to add a bit more friction to the handle, yeah. So we're just going to... And this is why I like to double up there. And then we start to pull and nip everything up. It'll all start to. Uh... All right. So what we've got to do now? We're going to go back to here <laughs> to pull that through to go through there. It's just, about, just, just, a, it's just a matter of manipulating. It's just getting all this ready for uh, for us to... pull through onto that one. And then we'll go over there. Through there once. And then we've got, because we've got the second tab, this is where we might use a stick, but we'll use the old sheath instead. Just to open it up a little bit.
warm knife sheath made from birch bark. So let's have a look at how it goes in and out again. It's not going to fall out, is it? You can see inside, you've got uh, the carved piece inside. I don't know if you can focus in on that one, Sandy. No, this won't see it. But, yeah, so, but inside, the, inside there is the, the wooden sheath, yeah, yeah. and that fits in that way around. And you can see that now can be worn around the neck or thrown in my little poshcraft box and then the next person that I see that doesn't have a knife gets a knife which is what I've done what I do with these Mora classics I'll buy them swap them trade them and then because these sheaves are I always keep this because they're nice just to store in but these are brilliant little things yeah I'm not the most nimble of guys um, I'm not an expert at this this can be done finer and nicer and more articulately and brilliant but this is just my little take on here have a knife have something nice and bushcrafty like a like a birch bark sheath with a mora and people will keep that forever because it's handmade that's right yeah it's nice so well, thanks for sh showing us that paul anytime mate anytime so that was very interesting for uh, uh paul to show us how to build the uh, the, the the sheath there now paul where did you learn this this uh, <laughs> where did you learn this then paul I learnt this from uh, from YouTube, and I learnt it from Des Catties. So, uh, cheers, Des. We're, we're, I'm a long time fan, and uh, I learnt birch bark just by watching Des Catties do stuff. And yeah, yeah. Um, I did the, my first container was was exactly how he did it, and that's what got me on my birch bark journey. But yeah, yeah. YouTube's your friend. Yeah. Um, keep watching. That's why I like yeah. YouTube.